Hi scientists, my name is Ria and I'm a TA with the Young Scientist Program at USC. Today we're going to be talking about ecosystems and what animals need to survive. So let's get started. Let's start by talking about what an ecosystem is. An ecosystem is a community of interacting organisms in their environment, and it's made up of both living and non-living things. And in these pictures are some examples of different ecosystems, but they also don't have to be this big. Ecosystems are anywhere where there is a community of interacting organisms in their environment. So how do animals live in all these different ecosystems? Well, that is where adaptations come in. And an adaptation is a change that helps an organism survive better in its environment. And so some examples are a polar bear having a thick coat of fur to protect itself from the cold arctic. Also, birds that have different sizes and shapes of their beak can eat different types of food depending on where they live in different ecosystems. And different animals are fit for different ecosystems depending on certain adaptations. So, for example, the penguins have a thick coat of fur to keep them warm in the arctic. And the shark has gills so it can breathe underwater. And the deer can blend in really well in a forest. There are also animals that live in the ecosystem maybe near your home. So, for example, there can be squirrels that run around, or maybe you've seen birds or even types of insects before. So what do animals need to survive in their different ecosystems? The main three are shelter, water, and food, but of course they will also need air too. We'll be focusing on these three today. And all organisms need these resources to survive, even us humans. So for our activity today, We'll be making a diagram of an ecosystem near you and labeling the resources that an animal may need to survive there. So we want to remember the three things that animals need to survive are shelter, food, and water. And so for our activity, you'll need um, some paper and then some crayons or markers to draw your ecosystem. To show you how this works, we're going to take a little virtual field trip to the forest. Hi everyone, so I'm in the forest and we are going to be making a diagram of the ecosystem here. So first let's try and find some animals that live here. Okay, so I found a deer right behind me and we're going to think of the three things that it needs to survive. So first we have shelter. So we can see that the deer has a lot of shelter in the trees and forest behind it. So the next thing is water. And usually deers can get this at a pond or a stream nearby through the forest. And the last thing is food. So in this case, the deer can get food by eating any type of leafy green or even mushrooms that may grow on the ground here. And now it's your turn. So you can find any ecosystem that you'd like. It can be one that you actually visit outside your home where you can find maybe insects or birds, or it can be one that you visit virtually just like I did. Just be sure to label all the resources that are found within your ecosystem. Now that we're done with our diagrams, let's make some observations. What do you think happens when there are more resources available, like food, water, and shelter? And what do you think happens when there are less resources available? Take a second to pause the video here and think of your answer. So actually, in any ecosystem where there are more resources, it will be easier for the organisms there to survive. So for example, in our ecosystem, if there are more food or more water or more shelter available for the deer, it'll be easier for them to survive. But when there are less available, it creates more competition for all the deer 
and it'll be less likely that they'll be able to survive. Now that we've learned about ecosystems, let's end today's lesson by talking about a scientist that studies the environment around us. Nicole Hernandez-Hammer is a climate researcher and activist who studies sea level rise. She studies what happens when our ecosystems are unbalanced and things like climate change impact our surroundings. She also works hard to educate communities about the effects of climate change. That's all for today's lesson on ecosystems. Thanks for watching.